If you're about to start a podcast in the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you the best platform that you can use for your podcast right now, so let's do this. Now, quite frankly, there are a lot of different platforms that you can use, but I'm gonna show you two and then give you the reasoning why you might pick one over the other. Because there are so many platforms, I think it's better that you have the understanding on how to judge the platforms so that no matter what platform you are looking at, you're gonna be able to decide which one is best for you. So two of the most popular podcast platforms out there are Zoom. Yes, I know it's a conference app, but a lot of people use Zoom to do podcasting. And then also Riverside.fm. So one of the reasons why you might choose Zoom is because it's simple and your guests are already likely to know how to use it. You can literally get some headphones, get a microphone, and invite a guest on and you could literally start your podcast in a couple days from now. Now Zoom is not going to record the audio or video in a professional grade manner, but in all honesty, that's probably not gonna matter when you first get started. The most important part of your podcast is number one, people know about it, and number two, that you're giving away good information that people want so that they come back and listen again. And truthfully, there are a lot of very large podcasts that are still run on Zoom to this very day. Now, there are a couple things to think about when you are recording on Zoom, and that is really what view are you recording? So in a lot of podcasts, you will typically see this side-by-side -side view like you see here. And if you like this view, you can use Zoom to do it, but what you're gonna notice is that it's capturing the full horizontal video for the host and the guest, which causes this blank space at the top and the bottom of the video. So if you want to use this view, you're gonna need to fill this space. And one of my clients, Tim here, he did this in a creative way by putting in the title and the episode, and then also the name of the show below. So you can use Zoom to record the full screen speaker view, where it's only showing either the host that's talking or the guest that's talking. And what that'll do is have a full screen video, so you won't need to have this top and the bottom here. But then you won't be able to see people side by side, and you may not want that. So now there is one thing to note. You could use Zoom to record both the host and the guest separately if you record to the cloud. You can log into your Zoom account and then you can actually select to record all of the different views for the guest and also the host using these settings here. But keep in mind, if you do that, you're gonna have a lot of different video files. You're gonna need a video editor to pull all those together to make a final video or audio file for your podcast. And the only reason why I mentioned that is because some people just want to record one Zoom call and make that their entire podcast. They've got the intro, the interview, the outro, and they can just literally take that video recording and post it. And then they can take the audio of that recording and post that to the podcasting platforms. One other advantage of using Zoom for your podcast is that you can select this, which is record each of the guests separately. So what that'll allow you to do is, for instance, if one of the guests happens to be louder than the other, you could fix that in post-production and equalize the volumes between the host and the guest and then fix that before you actually publish it. So next up is Riverside.fm. This is a great platform. The main reason why people would pick Riverside.fm over Zoom is because it records everything in professional grade video and audio. And it does that by recording everything locally on the computer from where somebody logs in from. So if I log into your podcast, it's actually recording my audio and my video locally. And then it's also recording the host video and audio locally. And that allows them to record everything in a very high quality and upload that instead of trying to upload it at the time of the interview, which is why Zoom has to compress that audio so that it's able to do that in an internet format live. Now really the only downside of using riverside.fm is that the interface is a little bit more complicated. So if your guests aren't as technically savvy, then they might have a little bit harder time using the interface, logging in, setting up their equipment, that kind of thing. If your guests are tech savvy and they're used to setting all these different things up, it's not going to be an issue. But if they are not, you're gonna to need to be prepared to walk your guests through any technical difficulties. Now I will say those technical difficulties are not a big deal, but if you're just getting started, that can be an added stressor for you and also your guests. And remember, we talked about using Zoom because everyone knows how to use Zoom. They've already set up their video, they've already set up their audio, and so it's gonna feel very natural for them to log into Zoom, whereas Riverside might be a new thing for them. And then we also talked about how Riverside.fm records everything locally, and so that's just one more thing to communicate to the guests so that they don't leave the studio and leave you hanging without a fully uploaded video and audio file. And then just one final thing to think about in terms of Riverside.fm is that it's gonna record all of the audio, that is the host, 
and the guest and the video of the host and the guest all separately. So if you want to pull those all together for a final video, you're gonna need a video editor to take those things together and to produce that final video. Now they do have some built-in tools that will help you combine those automatically, but if you're already using Riverside.fm to really control your show and have complete control over the audio and video, you may not want to use those built-in tools because a video editor is gonna be able to add some flair to your show that makes it stand out from somebody else. But I did wanna make sure that you understood that Riverside.fm does have some built-in tools to help you edit and combine and bring all of those different elements together so that you didn't have to have a video editor. So that's really it. Zoom is easy, it does a great job. It's not professional grade, but a lot of big podcasts use Zoom to this very day, so you can totally make it work. Just a few limitations that you have to think through so that your show comes out the way you want. And then there's platforms like Riverside.fm, which will allow you to do professional grade audio and video, record those in separate tracks, and then pull those together however you want to produce a final show. Gives you a lot of flexibility, allows you to add your personal touch with a video editor, but does require additional technical ability, both in terms of the host being able to help the guest through the technical setup, and then also the guest being able to set that up and have a successful show. So that's it for this. If this video was valuable, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. That helps me out a lot. Appreciate you being here and I will see you on the next video.